like uh, Dr. Song Tzu Li from APEC Climate Center, who is going to share his, his, his new model about this in dual drainage modeling for uh, using parallelized uh, computing technology and the mesh refinement. So he will talk about 20 to 25 minutes about his research and we will open for the questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Sung Sri from APEC Climate Centers. And uh, first of all, I'm very thanks to Dr. Albert for giving me a chance to make a presentation today. So today, my presentation is development and application of fully coupled 1D, 2D urban inundation model using mesh refinement method. So the, basically, this research was carried out to make a real-time urban inundation forecasting system using remote sensing techniques, namely radar and satellite information. So that the main focus of this research is concentrated how to reduce simulation time with acceptable accuracy. During my presentations, I'm going to talk about how to develop uh, this model and its application result. So let's get started. Okay, as you know well, once the urban inundation is occurred, there are huge damages because in urban area, uh, in urban area, peoples and properties are concentrated. So as you can see, if there is inundation, there might be these kinds of very annoying uh, damages. So in order to reduce these kinds of damages, there are two main countermeasures, hard and soft countermeasures. So as you can see in this slide, hard countermeasure has big advantage with a short clear effect, but it needs a huge amount of budget for implementation with long uh, construction times, and sometimes it may cause social conflict. On the contrary, soft countermeasure has this advantage that it's quite difficult to quantify the effect of soft countermeasures, but it is easy to get the result with a relatively low budget. So a real-time urban inundation forecasting system may be one of uh, these soft countermeasures. So what the needs for the uh, real-time urban inundation forecasting system, the first is data collection and uh, pre-processing must be uh, easy and a fast calculation time with acceptable accuracy. To secure acceptable accuracy, we may, uh, uh, we are supposed to use the fine DEM by considering land use, such as building, road, mountain area, park, so on. And also to secure the uh, acceptable, uh, sorry, and also to secure high calculation speed, we may simplify the slow network systems and apply the adaptive mesh refinement method using the uh, federal computing techniques. But someone may say, why don't you use unstructured mesh to fit complex urban uh, topography? Yes, it may be right, uh, but yeah, yeah, it may be right. Uh, unstructured mesh is able to defect complex urban topography. However, it's the generating the unstructured mesh is very huge time consuming works and its accuracy may be depending on modeler's subjectivity. So this is why I try to use the mesh refinement, mesh refinement method to defect urban topography because it's relatively easy to build a code for generating the mesh. So this slide shows the concept of OpenMP parallel computing method. As you can see, to compare with the serial uh, computing, the uh, OpenMP parallel computing uh, technique is able to save the uh, simulation running time. And here is the uh, here are governing equation for uh, to uh, simulate the movement of the stonewater on the surface. So I use the two-dimensional continuity and the two-dimensional uh, momentum equation. 
and also a leaf log method is applied using the struggle grid and this is this figure shows the location of each variable and the concept of leaf log method I think it's very general method and then this slide shows the how to refine the mesh and the location parameters on the refined mesh this is a one mesh but if we need the more uh, more high resolution, we can simply divide this uh, mesh to, into the four. And then if we need more accurate uh, resolution, we can uh, divide uh, mesh until we reach appropriate resolution. This method can save calculation time and it's easy to defeat complex topography. And this is the discretization method of continuity and momentum equations. And during this discretization, I used a finite difference method, FDM. I used FDM method. And here is a comparison, uh, comparison condition and to compare the accuracy and calculation time overflow from manual to surface experience data which were conducted by the Dr. Mattel in Sheffield University in UK is used. The uh, left is the downstream and the right side is upstream it's of the flume. And in refinement method, uh, maximum refine level is four. And this is a homogeneous mesh. And uh, this movie shows the uh, accuracy and the runtime comparison result and left movie is the result of mesh refinement method is applied and the right movie is homogeneous case and this graph shows the uh, water depth at specific point as you can see although all refined cases shows the higher water depth than uh, refined case the disc discrepancy is less than uh, one millimeter so it's acceptable, we can say. And this slide shows the test result. As you can see, the refined uh, case is able to save a huge amount of calculation time and the calculation growth. Even the R file, the size of R file is uh, very different. So next is application and uh, in 25 August 2014, uh, there was severe urban inundation in Busan, Republic of Korea, and this slide shows the damages at that time. It was quite severe. <coughs> Sorry. And this slide shows the location of that basin, and here is Busan. Oh, sorry. Here is Busan, and this is a study of Beijing, and name, uh, the name is Onsen Beijing, and this is a target area. And for the modeling, I used the fine DEM and load networks and sewer network to simulate the soft surface flow, and this slide shows the model input data. And then this slide shows the comparison between the homogeneous mesh and the refined mesh. And this uh, refined area is road because I locate the storm drain on the uh, road grid to make the flow exchange part uh, between the surface and the sewer systems. And this is the comparison of calculation uh, condition. The size of study area is 55.6 square kilometers and the number of grid as you can see the homogeneous uh, case is the more than the 2 million, 2.5 million but the, if you refine the, uh, a road mesh we can reduce it less than uh, 900,000 and the maximum size is five and uh, in refined case I used uh, a 10 meter grid with a five meter grid and calculation time steps are same and to use the rainfall data I used the uh, radar observation data which is located Kudok mountain it's very close 
to this study basin and this is the uh, rainfall data which was uh, observed by the radars at here. And the special resolution of radar data is one kilometers and the time interval is 10 uh, minutes. And here is the study basin and this uh, movie shows the movement of the uh, rainfall data. And this is the final result. And as you can see, we observed quite a severe uh, inundation around the river. This is uh, a river. Here is a river. And actually, to validate the simulation result, uh, we need the field observation data. But as you know, uh, it's very difficult to get the urban inundation field observation data. So that I use the online photo data, which was taken during the period, and I select the photo which have the uh, location information with uh, taken time. So as you can see, this figure was taken at around here, and I uh, converted this water depth using some uh, some structure like this. For, for example, in this uh, figure, we can say the inundation depth is around uh, um, uh, 40 centimeter because the depth is almost reached the knee of the uh, this person, and you can, as you can see, you can uh, we can see the depth by watching this uh, car. So this is a final result, and if you use the homogeneous uh, uh, homogeneous mesh the, with uh, using the one core. The calculation time is more than 14,000 seconds for three-hour calculations. But if we use the mesh refinement method, we can reduce um, 1.5 times. And also, if we use the uh, 12 cores, we can drastically, drastically reduce the calculation time. It's almost uh, uh, less than four times compared with using the one core. So this is a summary, and the achievement is the uh, mesh refinement method based parallel computing technique is uh, achieved an acceptable calculation time for the real-time forecasting system, we can say. And we use, uh, I use the rainfall data considering special distribution of rainfall, so if we can obtain the prediction rainfall data, we we may possible to we may be possible to predict and forecast urban inundation with uh, with enough uh, read times. But still, I didn't consider the uh, river flow because I didn't consider the cross section of the rivers and uh, always always the boundary condition is the problem because. This area, it's uh, uh, it's connected with another rivers, but there was no um, water depth observation stage station, and it I think it's the scale is quite small, and also I didn't consider the initial uh, condition of this study basin. I mean, uh, the initial condition was cold start. So here is. This is last slide of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shong Su. I would like to thank you again because you are our very first speaker from Asia, and then <laughs> it's very late for you. Thank you very much for sparing the time to give. Oh, us you're welcome, Harvard. And so during your presentation, you got more uh, participants. Question from the audience. Hi, um, thank you very much for your presentation. It was very interesting. Um, my name is Soledad, and I have uh, one question. Yeah. Um, could it be the drainage system? Uh, could it be incorporated within your model? Yeah, right. And um, how do you think it will, uh, it will affect the results? 
Oh, sorry, I didn't catch the, your point. Yeah, it's like uh, right now you are showing like uh, it's a um, you're just considering the rainfall, right? In the that's yes, right. Mm -hmm. So, are you considering the uh, drainage system within the city at this stage? Yeah, or? yeah of course, of course. I use the uh, slow model, one-dimensional slow models, mm -hmm. like this, and I uh, I use the one-dimensional continuity and uh, momentum equation to solve the movement of in within the thaw pipe. And as I mentioned uh, during my presentations. I used uh, uh, because why I use the refined muscle, uh, refined grid is that I'm using the road uh, on the surface. I use the road uh, road uh, road grid as the uh, discharge interaction point, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. I use the storm drain on the surface as the exchange uh, spot between the surface and the sewer systems. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other question? If I may just try to follow this uh, question. So you on this page you're showing that you use this uh, road grid to connect to the drainage. So would this uh, one dimensional connection or bi directional. I, you, you will have so yeah, of course, it. yeah, of course, it's a bi directional, uh, bi directional, uh, connection because, uh, so, uh, sorry, I didn't, uh, insert explanation of the storm drain because I want to emphasize the machine refinement method. But, uh, I used the wheel and, uh, modified wheel and, uh, we are an orifice equation to consider the hydraulic condition between the surface and the soap pipe. As you can see, I assume that uh, surface and soap pipe is connected with the uh, butcher uh, pipe to connect the storm drain and the soap pipe. And each time step, I calculate the water depth in the pipe and the surface and compare with the depth and then apply the wheel and orifice uh, equation to calculate the exchange discharge. Yeah, so when yeah. you when you have this flow from surface to the subsurface, so they are treated yeah. as lateral flow along the pipe. Yes right. For each grid. Okay. And yeah. For so the surcharge condition, if the pipe is full, how would, would this directly flow back? Yeah, at every time step, I check the hydraulic con difference of hydraulic condition between surface and uh, what what pressure in the soil pipe. So if the what the pressure in the pipe is higher than the water depth, there must be overflow, and other way. In, uh, in the contrary, if the water depth on the surface is higher than water pressure in the soap pipe, there must be uh, inflow from the surface to the pipe. So, Joe? Yes, hi. Um, well, thanks a lot for the presentation and sorry for joining a few minutes uh, late. Um, no <laughs> And I have a question um, regarding uh, if you could move uh, to slide 17. 17. Yeah. Yes. So when I look into these um, two images on the right, yeah. I, I, I think they are from the same place, right? Yes, it's the same place. But I see the roads. Apparently, the roads have a different elevation because they have yes. a different color than the on, on the bottom figure than the upper figure. First question: Can you explain me that? Because for me, if you if I understand these two pictures, these two mm -hmm. figures correctly, you are not exactly uh, using the same elevation to then compare the results. First question, and then just take opportunity yeah. for the another one. Mm -hmm. uh, in, then, in your case study, yeah. what you've done was to instead of refine the mesh, you just make it coarser, right? So the original one, if I remember correctly, has five by five uh, meters, the cell. Yeah. 
And what you've done in the refine mesh, it has five and then you I'm allow to maximum 10. I'm sorry, right. I use actually five by five meter mesh for the homogeneous case. Yes, and on yeah. the other one, uh, what you've done was minimum five and maximum 10. Yeah. The question right. uh, is, have you tried to actually refine the mesh? So mm -hmm. start with five by five and say, well, minimum could be one and then compare the performance of the model. Well, these yeah. are two, the two questions. So one yeah. is related to these two figures, and that one is to really refine and not make the mesh coarser. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you very much for your question. And for the answer for first question is, I, I, I think they must be same, because you can see the elevation of this, the color of this uh, red, red uh, position. Mm -hmm. You can see the same shape, right? So exactly I use the same uh, DEM data at the same location. But in this case, I used only 5x5 five five, uh, regular mesh. It's quite difficult to find the shape of the road. But I use exactly the same. Uh... Yeah, but it has a different color, which means that it has a different elevation value. That's, that's my yeah. question. Which, yeah. which for me, it's a little bit strange because if you want to compare uh, the two meshes, they should represent somehow at least similar elevations. And here, apparently, if I can read it properly, the darker blue means lower elevation. Yeah, right. So it, it looks that you carve the roads. So then I would expect slightly different results. I don't know. We can go and look at it. But in my, my, my point is that you should... Uh -huh. Although the mesh is different, uh -huh. the elevation should should be similar. Mm, yeah, right. You are right, and I agree with your uh, your opinion. Um, and but in this uh, refined mesh, the size of the mesh is five meters. So it's and the uh, grid color is blue. So it's it seems like the, it has the same uh, elevation, but they have different elevation. Okay, well, yeah. it might be yeah. interesting to, to check it. Yeah, I will yeah. check again after yeah. presentation. Yeah, that's fine. And, and for the second question, uh, basically I conducted, actually I conducted another research by using the one-dimensional high-resolution uh, DEM data, which was obtained uh, RAID, uh, LIDAR uh, data, mm -hmm. and I applied it uh, Arlington area in Texas, USA. At the time, I used the supercomputer, which was uh, located in the Texas University. At the time, I compared the model uh, runtime and accuracy by changing the mesh resolution from one meter to the six, maybe 16 uh, meters. At the time, we observed some uh, model result discrepancy, but at that time we uh, didn't have the validation data, so uh, it was quite difficult which one is more accurate than others, but there was definitely some uh, difference because the size of the mesh was different. But but in my opinion, the discrepancy was not so high. The only different thing is if you use a different mesh size, the flow direction was changed due to the very complex topography. So, and also it was accepted, uh, accepted in the environmental uh, modeling journal. So it was accepted so you can see soon in the Good. via the online, yeah, I will unload the, 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 the title of the papers. So you can see very interesting points in that uh, papers. Thank Good. you very much. Well, yeah. Congratulations. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. I th just quick comment on this side. I think the, the, the grid, they're all the code. I think the, the lower one got final grid. Yeah, and which is more dense compared to the the one on top. Yeah, right. You are right. Now I. Uh, 
Yeah. And now I realized I used a different slide because I conducted actually uh, two more cases, which was uh, conducted 10 by 10, uh, 10 by 10 resolution and 5 by 5 uh, resolution. But this is 10 by 10 resolution case. Sorry yeah. to make you confused. <laughs> so it Sorry. Yeah. seems right. to me the color is because the grid line instead of real elevation. Mm, so sorry? The, so the color for the road network. Road the, network, yeah. They, here? The, yeah, they're darker because of the grid line instead of real elevation you're showing. Yeah, it's but just the edge of the cell outside. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, it's because blue in part of you, and because you have so many so many cells, so many yeah. where you render, yeah. It becomes just one big blue, but you should have different uh, elevations. Yes, right. Yeah. Due to the uh, due to the verify mesh, it seems like the uh, same elevation, but actually it has different elevation. The blue line means blue color means the uh, refined mesh. Yeah. yeah. That's why you yeah. see the blue color. Just following this, so have you tried to compare different ways? So you, you now have 10 and 5 meter combination. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. try, try to refine, for example, if you 10, refine to 2, you, know, mm -hmm. you will have more, more uh, refined mesh connected yeah. with one big mesh? Yeah, basically the test case was conducted using the more refined mesh from um, maybe from 20 to here must be, yeah, sorry. Coarse grid is 20 centimeters, but finest mesh size is 1.25 centimeters. In this case, I applied, I refined more than actual case because it's to, uh, to defect uh, very small size of the manor, but in real field, if I refine more and more, the number of size is increased, so I think it's not necessary to refine more than one time. That's why I only refined one time. Yeah, but so yeah. my question is that instead, for example, you, you, you have multiple uh, layers, multiple mm -hmm. meshes, but uh, in, could, so Instead of developing these multiple layers, so you, can you directly refine so you have the coarse mesh at 10 meter mm -hmm. resolution, and the mm -hmm. next one you jump directly to 2 meter or 1 meter resolution? Ah, five. Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, and I catch to your point. But in this model, it's impossible to directly jump to 10, okay. uh, from 10 meter to the 2 meters. So yeah, it must be the a ratio top. of two. Yeah, right. Okay. Half size is divided by 10. Yeah. After that is 5 and 2.5. Yeah, like this. Okay. Do we have more questions? I do have a quick one. Yes, thanks, thanks, to, thanks, thanks to for, for your very good presentation. Uh, my question is, you use spatial varying rainfall. Am I right? Yeah, right. Um, how do you did the scaling when you used smaller <laughs> meshes, or you use just the the approximation that you had? Yeah, uh, basically, uh, as I said, I used the one scale resolution uh, uh, radar data. So okay. to apply the, this uh, rainfall data to the uh, model. Uh, I use the very simple method because uh, it's, each grid has their own uh, coordination, x, y direction coordination. So I uh, uh, convert that uh, coordination to be applied on the surface by uh, comparing the x, y uh, coordination values. OK, uh, and you just input it as a source term. Yes, right in the two-dimensional continuity equation. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.
Any more question? Okay, if not, I think we are just around about to finish. So thank you very much for attending this uh, webinar and thank you so again for giving this interesting talk. I think there are many interesting questions being raised so we can further discuss on by a different format. So, and thank you very yeah. much and see yeah, you next thank time. Very much. Yeah, thank you very much for our bot and thank you very much for the uh, participant to make, a, uh, to make a question. Thank you very much. I hope to see you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.